that if we win, we get the number one seed in the second round. But, you know, it, in order to be the best, you've got to beat the best. And so um, we're looking forward to the challenge. So you didn't think you, uh, by winning the tournament, get the automatic, the automatic seed that you would uh, you know, get a higher? We've, we've been fighting that. Uh, we've been fighting all year long. And um, our goal was to get into the NCAA tournament. Um, we, so with all the bracketology, and I'm not really the type to go look every single week online and see who's saying what, uh, I knew that we were projected to be between 9 and 11. So it doesn't surprise me that we're 9. Um, we beat some very strong teams on our way to our Pac-12 uh, title. So um, I'm, I'm, I'm excited. I'm excited for the opportunity. And, um, and I, I know my team will be ready. Coach, from the Pac-12 tournament, what are some of the strengths you learned from the tournament to take you into the um, NCAA tournament? Well, I think we, we have the desire and the will and, and the ability to fight through, through really tough circumstances. To win four games in four days in Seattle uh, against very strong Pac-12 competition is incredible. And so I think we learned uh, that we have a, a level of toughness that we didn't even know that we had. Um, I, I thought we executed in the important moments of the game, both offensively and especially defensively. And everyone thought I was crazy in the second half when I pu pulled out that press after playing <laughs> three days consecutively, but it worked. And the, the, the girls, the team, the, they started believing. And, and I think right now, they believe in themselves, and they believe in each other, and they believe that we are exactly where we're supposed to be. Thank you. you had a stretch there uh, mid-season, or maybe a little later in mid-season, where you lost six out of eight. Did the did the belief start after that, or how did it, did they hang on to the belief through that long stretch? Well, we did have a tough stretch mm -hmm. during the second part of our conference, and. And I thought a lot of people stopped believing in us, but we never stopped believing in ourselves. We understood what we needed to do. We knew we needed to go out to Utah and get a win, Colorado, get a win. We really got into a, a habit of taking one game at a time, not really getting ahead of ourselves and not overlooking any opponent. And, and that, I thought, started to build some momentum um, and some belief in us. And, and, and we started to fight. And, and we understood what we needed to do, and we were Zoom focused in on exactly what our goals were. Um, so Utah was goal number one, then Colorado, then the first round of the Pac-12 tournament, then the second round, and then on and on. And that's literally how we took it. And I just thought, game by game, we started to believe more and more until we, we won the championship um, against Oregon State. When we're playing four games in four days, how did you manage that just from a physical standpoint? How did you, how did you, they didn't have much time to get much rest. Or? Yeah, I, I will tell you, it was very difficult to, to manage it. Uh, but with Rachel and, and Kelly, Rachel is our trainer and Kelly is our strength and conditioning coach, keeping them stretched, ice whirlpools, getting them off their feet in bed, really um, trying to relax. But ultimately, it's about heart. It's about what you believe. And this, this team believes, I mean, that fight on is an action. Mm -hmm. And that we actually go out and we fight on and we fight through the tough moments that a game mm -hmm. or that a tournament might bring us. And they did that. And, and as a result, we came away with the Pac-12 uh, championship title. You guys were on a big emotional high after winning the Pac-12 tournament. Are you glad you had a two-week break to kind of get off that? Or do you wish you played sooner to keep that? Well, quite honestly, we had a very emotional game. We played a very emotional game against Stanford. And I wasn't sure that we could get ourselves back up to play Oregon State in that championship game. When we played Oregon State and came out in the second half and pressed, and we exerted so much energy and emotion, and we won that championship, I, I was concerned that we would be able to recover in time for the, the NCAA tournament. I was so, we were so lucky to have this time off because it literally has taken us a full week to recover from playing those four games in a row. So mm -hmm. I don't think we uh, are emotionally, you know, have to worry about emotions. I think right now we needed that time to, to come back from, from playing four games in four days. How much practice, I mean, when did you practice the next time after the... Uh, we gave them three days off okay. and then we literally, I, I literally took it easy for another day and really just did shooting and we did some walkthrough stuff and some adjustments both defensively and offensively that we needed to make. Um, 
But then we had our full, probably full out, all out practice that fifth day. Um, that I think it was a Friday. That we finally, in football, you would say we put on the pads. <laughs> um, you know, we, we finally went all out. And, and now I really feel like today was, was one of the first days that I felt like they were fully recovered. How much have you talked to the team about the history and tradition of this program? Yeah, you know, I, I, I talk um, very little to this team about tradition and history. I really want them to make it their own, put, put their own footprint on this program. It's really about this team and what they accomplish and, and, and make it their own. Not only this this program, but this university and, and all that, all the sacrifices that the players make every single day. It's really about them. It's not about me. It's not about what we did in the past. It's about them making their own, you know, carving their own name into the history books of, of USC women's basketball. When you took over, how did you feel the GAC tournament being your first season? Well, you know, I, I like to win, and so I believe <laughs> that we that we could win. You know, but I understood that we were a long way away from making it to the NCAA tournament, but that we would have to take it one step at a time. We couldn't get ahead of ourselves. And, and I couldn't start talking NCAA talk back in September, back in October, that we really had to start to working, working towards that goal in, in everything we did in practice. For example, it, the mentality of coming to practice and executing plays in practice and working hard in practice and getting up, making your mild time, and all of those little stepping stones were, were things we needed to achieve in order to get ourselves physically and mentally prepared for what for our Pac-12 tournament and then the next steps. And so we never got ahead of ourselves. We always took one step at a time. No one on this team has any NCAA tournament experience? But you I, I do. <laughs> but you do? <laughs> so what do they have in store for them? Well, I think, as, as I said, when we went from regular season to our Pac-12 tournament, I said, what we did in the preseason, what we did in conference is not going to be enough. You've got to step your game up a level. You've got to step your focus up, your, your concentration, your heart, your determination. You've got to, you've got to step it up a little bit. And so that's, that'll be a similar speech that I talk to them, that I tell them when we get ready for our first NCAA tournament game. You know what, if you want to know how it feels, you've got to step your game up to another level. If it's turnovers, if it's making that jump shot, if it's getting to the lane, if it's getting a defensive stop or a rebound, whatever it is, do it better. And I think that will get us prepared for that first NCAA game. How much Knoxville time have you done over the years? You've had to have been there a few times, right? Yeah, I've been in Knoxville a few times, I'll, yeah. I'll, I'll say. Uh, but, you know, this is all a great experience for our, our women's basketball program. That's what this is really about, and it's about the, the student athlete experience. And part of that is not only winning games in preseason and conference, making it to the NCAA tournament. This is the addition. This is the, the icing on the cake, so to speak, um, as, as, you, as you go through your journey as a student athlete. It's one thing for you guys to beat Colorado when they're in top 15, but how much of a confidence boost going into the, the bigger stage is it that Stanford win? You know, I think the Stanford win gave us a lot of confidence. Uh, you know, they, they, had not, they had not, and the, the players on the team before I got here had not ever beaten Stanford. And, and I think, you know, it just a, it's a huge confidence builder. But the other thing is it allows you to look in the mirror and say, I can. Instead of, I haven't before and maybe I can. It, it allows you the opportunity to say, hey, I've done it, I've done it before and I can do it again. And that's a confidence builder in itself. And so I think right now we have a good, solid, a healthy level of confidence and we have to continue to build from there. Is there a point in the season where, that you can point to where things kind of turned and, and you thought, that, you know, this is a team that, that can make a run like they did in the Pac-12 tournament? Well, honestly, from the beginning, I believe that this team could be an NCAA bound team. I saw the talent, I saw the work ethic. We had a lot of work to do between then and now. But I, I honestly believe that we could make some noise, not only in our conference, but in, in the NCAA tournament. I believe that. I understood, though, that this is a process. And, and we had a lot of work to do between then and now, and I didn't know if we could achieve it. Probably after the Colorado game. So, you know, we played a very physical, emotional game against Colorado. And as a team, we won.
I believe that game was probably a turning point for us. We played a very tough Arizona team that didn't have anything to lose, so they played loosely and they gave us all we could handle in that first round. And then, you know, ASU, and we had lost in overtime. So every round in the Pac-12 tournament, it had, we had something to prove and it helped us build our confidence. Were you kind of hoping maybe you'd get to play at UCLA or Seattle? I can't say that I was hoping to play at UCLA or, or stay in, Los in the Los Angeles area. I just wanted us to, you know, match up. So it's, it's really about matchups, and and um, and I feel like we, we match up well. And and I'm just, you know, I'm excited to be in an NCAA tournament. I'm excited for this team. I'm excited for these young women. They've earned it. No one gave it to us. We earned it. We beat the number four team in the nation, and um, and so I'm excited to see the next step, the next phase um, for this team. How important are your role players going to be? Uh, somebody like Kiki stepping up and scoring a bunch of points against Utah or something like that uh, outside of Cassie and Araya? Yeah, I think, you know, I think all the, you know, the one reason why this win was so great in the Pac-12 tournament and all of the wins were great was because we stepped up as a team. So one day it was uh, Alexis Viola Tama, one day it was Araya Crook, one day it was Cassie scoring 10 points in a minute and a half, one day it was Kiki hitting a winning shot against ASU. Every player who stepped on the court, one day it was Brianna Berry burying a three-point shot, or um, Desiree Bradley coming in off the bench knocking down two big three-pointers against Oregon State. So each day it was someone as a part of this team that stepped up and that's what we're going to need for the NCAA tournament.